So today's video is just going to be a discussion, well, not to say discussion, but me telling you how the wildlife law works over here. So basically, we have a book, right? An act book, where we have all the list of every species that require you to have a permit or a license to keep. So some of my tarantulas, which includes the Kilobrachis, Capelpelma minix, I have to license for them. And in order for me to renew the license of that particular tarantula, it is required for me to go to the vet or any like panels under the wildlife department and ask them to write a letter saying that the tarantula is unable to be microchipped. Now, for snakes, other animals, you have to microchip them in order to keep them once they are at a bigger size. Now, these animals that require to be chipped only apply to the ones that are in the book, in the list of species that I just mentioned. Now, that includes ball pythons and retics and green tree pythons and boas. Yeah, all these snakes are in the act book and it, it is required for you to microchip the snake once they're big enough in order for you to keep it legally okay make sense yes okay now why do you want why do they want you to microchip them basically it's so when the snake dies you cannot replace the snake okay you cannot replace the snake because the chip is already inside the snake so when the snake dies and when you get another snake you will have to redo another license for that new snake make sense yes okay fair enough now that is if the snake is big enough already you can microchip that if they're a small baby you are required to bring the snake to a vet and let the vet inspect the snake, weigh the snake, measure the snake, do whatever they want with the snake. And then they will write you a letter saying that the snake is too small to be microchipped. And then you will have to bring that letter to the wildlife department and let them read the letter and just allow you to keep the snake temporarily without it being microchipped. And temporarily means they give you a temporary chip number on your license. So, once the snake is big enough, you will have to bring it to microchip. Now, microchip as in putting the microchip into the snake, like the cloaca over there. And once you have done that, you have to bring the snake to the wildlife department and they will scan the snake and make sure the microchip number, it is in the snake, right? And then they'll use the number and put it onto your license. Okay, that is fair enough. Now, I, I'm not a big fan. I don't really support, I don't support at all microchipping of snakes because I've had a friend who microchipped his snake and the snake eventually died. It's, it's pretty much like a ticking time bomb. Like the, I mean, just imagine, right? You're putting a foreign object into the snake. If the snake's body rejects it or the snake has whatever complications, who is to blame? Exactly. I never support microchipping these animals. Now, once the snake is microchipped and they give you the license, then you are good to go. You can keep the snake. However, if the following year, the snake is not big enough still, you will then have to go back to the vet and get another letter because each license is valid for only one year. So once that license expires, you will have to go to the vet again, right? And then make another letter and you have to pay them. Okay, it's not cheap. Each letter is about 60 bucks. So if you have a lot of snakes, you are, yeah, you're pretty much screwed. And then on top of that, once the snake is not able to microchip, you'll have to go and make another letter. What if you have like 10 snakes? Yeah. And then, you know what's the funny thing? The funny thing about this is that they're not flexible at all because they say it's a procedure for you to go to the vet to get a letter. Now, my ball pythons, when they had babies, right? The babies hatch out at what? 60 grams, 70 grams, some even 50 grams. And they still want me to go to the vet to get the letter in order for me to make the license. Okay, fair enough. But the thing is, I'm confused. Like, why? I mean, you know, the vet clearly written in the letter that they require the snake to be 1000 grams in order for them to be chipped and i'm pretty sure they have 
mention that to the wildlife department. If they haven't, then I don't know. But isn't it common sense that when a baby snake does not reach like, I mean, it's obviously a baby snake. It's not even a hundred grams, let alone a thousand grams. And why can't they just see the baby snake and be like, okay, we'll give you a temporary license number for now. They want me to still go to the vet or panel to get a letter and pay for that letter and yeah in order for me to get the what you call that the license okay fine if you do that for the first time fine then why it's the second year now they don't want me to get from the vet saying that the snake has to be a thousand grams no 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 no. every year you will have to go so pretty much indirectly you're encouraging people to power feed their snake to you know reach the appropriate size in order to chip them now snakes that's one part of the story tarantulas oh my gosh where do i begin okay for snakes right you can microchip them when they're big like penelope and then my champagne my albino they're all big and they have been chipped already and they are doing fine after the chip no issues whatsoever hope it remains that way now for tarantulas oh my god basically it works the exact same okay so for tar <laughs> this one i cannot brain okay i cannot brain this so isn't it obvious that a tarantula you cannot microchip right yes and yet they still want me to for like my kilobrachis haplopelma and the tarantulas that i have that require a license right in order for me to renew the license they still want me to go to the vet and get a letter saying that the tarantula cannot be chipped oh my gosh and the letter is not even cheap my gosh so all of my snakes plus tarantulas for this year i'll have to go to the vet and just for the letter I'm going to have to spend 800 over bucks just for a letter for one year. I mean, oh my gosh, I, I'm really, I don't know. I don't know how, like, I hope someone, like, watches this video in the wildlife department and, like, I don't know, because they want you to make letters saying that the tarantula or even scorpion like now the only scorpion that we require license is the asian forest scorpion which is the hetero something yeah that one okay asian forest scorpions those we need license so it applies the same to tarantulas and snakes as well so now my snake is the one that that laid eggs for all of the babies i will have to go to the vet and i cannot make the letter for all at once i have to make it individually right so my question is if you want me to make tarantula licenses and you want me to get the letter saying the tarantula is not microchip and each letter is like what i don't even know okay now the letter on my local vent like near my house over here she charges i think each animal each letter is about mm, close to 100 bucks. But I got my friend, which is also a panel registered under the wildlife department. They're going to do it for me for 35 bucks each, which is why in total it's going to be 800 plus bucks, right? 35 bucks each. And that is because I have a lot of animals. So, yeah. And since... Okay, let me explain this. So, since the snakes, right, they want you to have letter for all of the babies. My question is, for snakes, six babies, seven, eight, for ball pythons. Fair enough, if you want me to pay, like, for each letter. What about for tarantulas? If you want me to make a letter for every single individual. Okay, what if my tarantula has an egg sack of like 300 babies or 500 babies or better yet a thousand babies yeah if the vet or the panel has to write a letter for each individual animal <sighs> when will it finish and do you think he has the energy to write a thousand letters for tarantulas yeah 
I'm not the only customer. <laughs> so basically, that's what they mean. That's what the wildlife department wants from us in order to get the license, in order to make the license. And to me, I just cannot brain this. I just, I don't know. Because for my previous snakes, the babies, I had to pay for, I think, what, three? Yeah, remember the head, head albino ones? Three babies, the one the reason eggs that we cut? Yeah, those three babies I had to pay for each of the letter. So for what about for, what about for tarantulas, right? If my tarantula lays an egg of a thousand babies, hmm. So you expect me to pay like what thirty five thousand bucks for letters in a year, and then the next year I'm gonna have to do that again? Just doesn't really make much sense, right? But yeah, apparently that is the procedure, cause I don't know. The I, I don't know why they can't just look at the tarantula and be like, yeah, obviously it cannot be chipped. But no, they still want me to go to the vet and I mean I'm not blaming the what you call that, the guy that's working at the wildlife department counter when he told me this. But it's just to me it doesn't really make much sense. For snakes, yeah, okay. For snakes, fair enough. Let's say maybe a retake. It has like 50 babies. And then you want to do individual letters. Fine. And then, but for tarantulas, what if it has like a freaking thousand babies? And the thing is, once each of that specimen dies, if each specimen dies, you will have to go back to the wildlife department and report to them that one died. And then they will remove one of the license from the list. So... <laughs> A thousand babies. Likely, very likely, not all are gonna survive. So, what if every day, let's say, every two days, one dies? Am I supposed to go to the wildlife department and, like, report? Oh, one die every two days. I'm not saying that every two days it's gonna die, but... Really, to me, it it's, it's a bit of a hassle. But at the same time, it just doesn't really make much sense to me, right? For snakes, it makes sense. Sorry if I'm going over and over and over repeating the same thing, but I'm just trying to explain and I'm not good at explaining things. And for snakes, it's like freaking... <laughs> I mean, for tarantulas. For scorpions as well. Each individual scorpion, you will have to go to the wallet department and tell them that, yeah, I have this amount of scorpions and then get the license for each. But before you get the license, you have to go and get the letter from the vet saying that they cannot be a chip and then you the vet will give you the what you call that the microchip yes apart from the letter that you have to pay you have to pay for the chip as well so i don't think that makes much sense you cannot microchip a tarantula so why can't they just give you a temporary chip number for that tarantula for you to put at the enclosure but no they want me to go and get a microchip number from the vet which i have to pay for the letter and the chip and then put it on the enclosure it doesn't really make much sense to me so you're saying if my tarantula has a thousand babies i'm gonna have to buy a thousand microchips <sighs> okay so <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of weird now i'm not bashing my local wildlife department or anything okay don't get me wrong but to me, I'm just trying to explain the law over here and I hope someone from the department in the upper head or something can, I don't know, can watch this video and try to, I don't know, think for this situation is if that's how you can explain it. Yeah, because it really doesn't really make sense to me because that's what I went to the wildlife department guy and asked. So each individual animal you will have to get the vet letter in order to keep the he said it's also this law he said it's also written in the book of acts so yeah to me it's kind of weird but it doesn't really make sense to me what if my tarantula is a thousand babies oh yeah one more thing i forgot to mention so in theory they want you to have the microchip in your animal or having the microchip sticker is so that you cannot replace your animals, right? And I mentioned that if let's say your tarantula has babies, 
not 100% is going to survive. So if let's say I have a thousand babies and I have a thousand microchips, right? And then let's say, give or take, maybe 50 dice. Let's just say 50 dice, okay? So if I'm not allowed to replace them, 50 microchips, they just go down the drain. Just doesn't really make sense, if you'd ask me. Man, forget that. It really doesn't make sense to have like a thousand microchips for individual tarantulas. Yeah. So anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Oh yeah, now after explaining every single one of this information to you guys, I just remembered a couple of years back when I had my animals and someone else was doing for me the license, they would give me the temporary license code. Now, the number. But then this particular guy that I spoke to recently, he's telling me that I need microchip numbers for every single animal. So, uh, is everyone working there having different information? I don't know. But whatever it is, I gotta follow the updated one. So, whatever I'm telling you guys now, that's the updated information that I just recently got.